emodels.co.uk. Make something awesome. Hello, I'm Chris from Gross Models, and this is my build for emodels.co.uk, uh, which is a MiG-21. Uh, actually, it's two MiG-21s uh, from uh, Edward. It's a one of their dual combo packs uh, in 144, as is my my thing. Um, so let's have a look and see what we get and what we're going to do with it. Let's have a look. Let's get everything out of the box. Uh, on the box itself, you get some uh, information about uh, various different versions of the MiG-21 uh, which you say you've got serial numbers for it from uh, Russia, Soviet Union, uh, Poland in the late 80s and Soviet Union down there as well. Uh, I haven't decided as yet exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm not one for doing exact matches to camo pat patterns and things like that. Uh, I have decided I do want to do one in the shiny, shiny steel. Uh, and <coughs> I don't particularly like the light colour, so it's going to be sort of one of one of those two and one of those two. Might go for the later two. Uh, so let's put that to one side and see what we get in the kit itself. Uh, you get two packs. Um, basically, they're identical because it's two identical planes. The moulding and the sprues are the same on both of them. So building them will be a case of building one bit and then doing exactly the same again on another kit. Uh, and as ever with a, a small uh, vehicle in 144 there's not much there's not many parts uh, I haven't actually counted 28 41 42 is the highest number I can see on there uh, and then obviously another little sprue there with looks like the main fuselage itself I'm not sure why that's separate to everything else it's like the tail section but um, yeah nicely molded uh, the plastics are the normal you know normal model, model kit plastic uh, a couple of very tiny pieces on there little 12 25 is little um, antennas I expect so that sort of thing uh, there are uh, undercarriage in this kit but I'm going to be doing them in flight if I can figure out some way of doing some sort of clear backing piece we'll figure out how to do a, an in-flight version um, so we've got two sprues, say exactly like that. We've got another bag here, which has got once again our oh, two identical pieces of uh, clear canopies and whatever. Again, one for each. We have uh, decals. Again, lots of different ones depending on what version you're going to be doing, and uh, what looks like masking. Yeah, looks like decal, uh, can canopy masking templates. I don't know if they come out on camera at all. But uh, a few little round ones, few shaped ones, few different bits. I'm sure that will become clear as we go through. Uh, we have a instruction manual, which is full of a, a wall of text uh, oh, in a couple of different languages. Uh, MiG-21, uh, Soviet, Warsaw Pact, yeah, lots of... In numbers and stuff the kit allows you to build foremost a model of the MiG-21 uh, MT or SMT uh, yeah basically lots of details <coughs> and uh, yeah there we go uh, so we've got the sprue with the main bits on it the class clear, clear one and the extra one and yeah Edward mask so for masking that makes that a lot easier than playing around with it uh, let's see, oh, that's saying to use the masking for, let's say, the canopies. A couple of bits on the uh, different colours, highlights on the, the tailplane. That's interesting. I've not done a kit that supplies masking quite like this before, so this is going to be a fun thing to do. Uh, right, interior colour, it tells you the colours sky blue with bright green, green and cobalt blue. Again, I'm not going to be using exactly matching, because I don't, but uh, I will be working well along similar sort of things. Uh, again, we've got options for canopy open or closed. Uh, obviously, it's going to be in flight. Pretty sure the canopy is going to be closed. 
so flicking through the instructions just to have a, a feel for what's going on there's a few little bits interior detail that needs painting as you go then obviously the main body will be painted once it's assembled bits about the undercarriage which I'm not going to be using so I'll figure it out when I get to it uh, yeah, canopy open, canopy closed and the last one is uh, options for the loadout which again we'll worry about when we get there doing big rock, big bombs or little rockets things like that and then we get more detailed pictures of the all of the various versions which is nice gives you lights if you are exactly duplicating the um, camo patterns it gives you all the three versions of that and obviously the under as well underside as well uh, it tells you that there are extra photo etch accessories available which is some of the gun up details and engine details and other versions of similar kits that you may enjoy. If you like this, you might also like. Uh, so, that's uh, basically a quick look inside the box. I'll get some of these bits off the sprue and start building. Uh, as ever, if you've not watched any of my builds before, the way I tend to do it uh, is to get a few bits built and painted and then go on to the next section. Uh, I'm not sure how that's going to work with this, obviously being only relatively few bits anyway. I'll have a look through and see what I can come up with, but uh, obviously the interior um, control panels or whatever are going to need to be painted before going in. Uh, I'll pretty much try and follow the instructions actually, it's, it's basically saying to paint as you're assembling all of that. Um, I'll have to go back to the colour shout outs because I don't know what H332 is. Uh, it's got a list down here, there we go. Uh, it's listing uh, aqueous and mr color numbers which are obviously what they are uh so we've got 332 let's look at that that is a a light gray so basically i just use a light gray but uh yeah stay there i'll just get the bits ready and uh start the assembly on the off chance that you're completely new to building model kits i'll start right at the very beginning uh this is a sprue, uh, basically it's where they keep the the parts of the kit while it's being assembled, uh, while they're making it. Uh, you need either a, a sharp craft knife or some cutters to remove it from the sprue. Uh, now depending on how good your cutters are and how neat everything is, you might want to cut away from the model on the sprue to get it off of the, the main sprue itself. Let's just get all of that one off. And then, when you've got it separated and able to be maneuvered more easily, you can get in closer. Uh, now these cutters are, I say, quite good. They've got flat edges. So I can actually get very close to the kit itself, uh, making sure you cut off all the bits you don't need, not the bits you do. Uh, so, that bit at the end, let's double check the instructions. Yeah, that bit at the end is just a, a an extra nub from manufacturer, so we can get rid of that. Don't want to get rid of that bit because that's part of an attaching point. So uh, we have so a bit on there that I can get rid of. Once you've got down to most of the bits, uh, you can use a sanding stick or a, a file to get rid of the last little bits. Again, being careful you don't get rid of, this is like a raised detail that's not part of the sprue. Because that wasn't actually attached to anything. Uh, it's matching the other part, the other side actually. Let me get that one off as well. Because, apart from anything else, that gets rid of that sprue. Always make sure you get rid of all the bits before you dispose of any sprue, because you don't want to find halfway down the line that you did actually miss a bit. Uh, now, as I'm going to be sanding across a seam here and these two bits go together, it's not a bad idea to get them assembled first. Uh, so these are actually held in place where we just by one little blob and hole 
and then attached all the way along the rest of it. So I'm going to be using some Tamiya Extra Thin. Uh, what I'm going to do is put some in that hole and just attach along where I need it to be as well. Get that assembled. Get that lined up properly. Now this is a strange piece that doesn't actually join up on all sides. It sort of joins on the top but there's an open bit down the bottom where it attaches to the rest of the kit. So you make sure that's assembled how you need it to be. Probably not the best part to start showing you things with but it works. So we'll get that there and then we can run a little bit more extra thin along it and it will get sucked into where it needs to be. Let me put the top on the glue, move that back out of the way. So that's basically that. This glue does dry pretty quickly. There's a little bit still open at the front there, so let's add a little more glue to that. And then we can hold that together just for a, a few seconds while that sets. Actually, it's got a flat base, so I can put it down on there. And then I can hold it a little bit better, a little bit easier. Now, obviously, this is a small 1 to 144 kit. Uh, if you're dealing with bigger pieces, it's generally a little bit easier. There's more to hold, more to grab, more to do things with. So now when that's dry on there and set, that will be as if that's one piece of plastic. Uh, so what I can do then, what I'm actually going to do now is this other little nub here that I can still see. So I can get rid of a little bit more of that. And then I can use just a small edge just to sand that down to get rid of the lump, not getting rid of the other lump that I need to attach this to the rest of the plane. There we go, that's much nicer there. Uh, any discoloration or anything on there will be disappearing because it's obviously going to be painted anyway. Uh, and now, because I've got these glued together, I can sand down around rather than just going across it and making a flat. So we can sand that across there. That gets rid of the little bits of glue that were still stuck up the top there. And that should give us a nice finish without any seam line to speak of there. A little bit there as well, where it was else attached. Now the main, obviously the whole piece is has a seam line. So I'm just going to go along all of that, just lightly, just to get rid of the last bits of that. And again, any of the glue that's sort of stuck to the top. Uh, this is quite a coarse sanding stick, so I'll then go down to a, a finer grade and again very lightly just do the same again and then I'll go down uh, probably all the way down actually it's quite smooth already so I'll go down to a very fine almost polishing stick and then the other side of this is actually basically a polishing stick so that gives me a finish there that you can't tell ever used to be two pieces of plastic. Uh, so uh, that's basically how model kits are made. All you need to do, pick them up, start sticking bits of plastic together, and then you're away. So I'm going to get uh, some other pieces ready to go. I'm not going to show you cutting off and filing every piece because then the video will be a stupid amount of time. But when there's anything interesting, I'll come back and show you what's what. Well, I've taken off most of the, the bits off the sprue, time from very, very tiny bits on there. Uh, the bits I've got left are mainly the weapons that I've got to decide what goes underneath and the attaching points for them. Uh, and the rear wheels. Now, the wheels are something that I've had to change my 
plan, which always happens with my builds. Changing plans is sort of second nature to me. Um, I did intend to do them uh, as a, an in-flight kit, uh, which you know is ideal for me. It looks good. Looks good. I had an idea for some sort of diorama type display, but they're not designed to be done without wheels. Uh, the way that they're built, the um, underside obviously has these uh, cutout pieces uh, ready for the wheels and there's a little interior piece that goes in there and the covers are the main problem. Um, this is one of the covers for the the rear wheel bay uh, which doesn't fit with it um, closed. It doesn't look right, it doesn't work properly. They're designed to be in the open position with the wheel behind it. Uh, now probably could convert it and mock it up and fill it and make it right, but I still have this open area here, uh, which basically isn't going to be quite right. I'm fairly certain, looking at it now, I thought I saw a bit that looked like that sort of shape, but it isn't. That fill would fill in those, but no, these, these are all for mounting the rockets on as are those bits and these bits and everything else uh, so yeah even the front if I put those together like that uh, the front wheel which goes in there uh, there are cover pieces which are these tiny little bits um, they could sort of go on closed but it's not quite right it doesn't look right I've put them on there and it doesn't look like it's going to quite fill the gap so I decided to do them wheels down uh, but I'm still going to do them in flight I'm going to do them uh, sort of as if they've just taken off or just coming into land or I'll figure something out probably taking off would be better to be a, an upright thing rather than a going down um, so I've got most of the bits ready for that except for as I say the rear wheels and the engines because there's some very tiny bits in there and I've got enough bits to be dealing with uh, so what I'm going to do is get these partially assembled and then painted up uh, the obviously the bottom bit the way it goes is uh, this those two halves go together that's obviously where the cockpit piece goes a clear canopy over the top there uh, the big bit actually goes onto the bottom there as the the wings these are obviously the tail uh, the rear tail assembly uh, and the bit that I'd glued together previously goes on over the top uh, just like that so it actually fits in just behind the the cockpit canopy there so it's got these lumpy bits all over it but yeah uh, so it's that's the size of the plane obviously that's the front uh, nose cone as well that's the entire size of the plane which is obviously not not very big uh, so um, I'm gonna get bits of this primed and painted and then assemble the rest of it uh, most of it's obviously going to be done in the the exterior paint job of the, the things. Uh, this is the bit inside that I was looking at. Um, I'm just going to put this together now. Uh, I don't know what it is. It's some sort of engine bay or rocket bit, it, it, but you can actually see it through the open canopies of here. It fits into the middle, sort of like that. No, sorry, I'm a bit low on the camera there, about like, about like that. So there is a chunk of that that's visible. Uh, so I'm just going to glue that together. Uh, we've got the instructions here, which say about say the first one, the second one, and the two sides. They are all different pieces. So that goes on the side, one goes at the front, and on the inside of that you have the shaped piece that that fits onto. So what I'm going to do is add some glue to the side of that that I need. Try not to turn it around because that will just confuse me. Uh, and that's the one that goes that side. 
So basically that goes on there a bit like that. Actually, no, it doesn't. The flat side goes the other side. So that's the one for that. Get that the right way up and the right way round. With that bit there. That goes on there like that. Fits into the interior shaping of that. Uh, so I'm going to get the other two bits of that done and then that's one bit. Most of it will be primed, not assembled. And then, let's say, finish off painting, being assembled. Uh, there's a decal for the um, control panel. But uh, we'll worry about that after painting, or after the first bit of painting. Uh, I'm not going to be able to show you uh, spray painting, because it's, you know, loud and out of the way. But, uh, yeah, see you in a moment. So I've got it all primed in uh, gloss black because that gave the best results for when I'm going to put the um, C1 metalizer over it. Uh, so just to give an idea of how it's going to look, those bits obviously go like that. The wings fit from underneath like that. There you go. And on top, where's the on top? There's the on top. We have that, so pretty much like that, uh, obviously with other bits fitted to it as well. Um, so all primed in black, ready for the uh, metalizer and, and things. But while I was doing that, I did it again, because obviously this is building two of these at once. Uh, so I've done exactly the same thing for a second one. So we've got another one ready good to go in exactly the same situation I'm not going to bother putting it all together together because it's obviously not going to go together quite yet uh, so that's that but inside of that we've got to put the uh, control panel and the little uh, I'm not sure what that is some sort of bomb rack or something which is just about visible through the bottom here uh, because I've got to have the landing gear on um, due to the covers not quite finishing properly, as I mentioned. Um, I've got to have landing gear, otherwise it's not going to look right. So, uh, that needs painting before being put in, as does that and a decal on the front there. Hopefully you can just about catch, if I get the light right uh, and the angle right on there, um, you'll be able to see... There are actually little dials and things on there, but there are decals for that, uh, which obviously, again, I've got that one to do. I've also got that one to do exactly the same again as a second uh, panel and obviously second part of everything else. I'm keeping them all separate so I know which ones go to which. Not that it matters, but it's just easier to keep it all occupied that way. Uh, so I'm going to uh, do some painting of the interior. Uh, I've also got so a couple of bits stuck to the, the insides here as well. Uh, before I painted it. So I've got to do some painting of the interior and then I say getting the interior bits fitted on before I can close it all up. Once it's closed up I'll be able to do the painting of the exterior, one in camo, one in C1. And then we can see about putting the other little extra bits on the little uh, spiky guns and obviously a canopy and things like that. So I'm going to get the painting done that I can. Unfortunately I can't show you that because it's just too up close and everything. But uh, just going to be brush painting the required interior colour and some detail on there. I think there's little decals to go onto the edge here as well. So I'll get that sorted as well. And um, be back in a moment. The next step, after I've uh, painted the uh, cockpit area, um, a couple of bits black, grey and uh, a sort of bluey green, uh, is the decals. Uh, now, I've got two, obviously the same, so we've got decals that cover two of everything. Uh, these are for the inside of the walls, which I'll do as well. But the ones I'm looking at at the moment are 11 and 14, uh, which are for the the main big panel and the little bit down the bottom there. Uh, the one I'm going to do at the moment is the little one. Uh, I'm not going to film doing all of these again, because I'm sure you all know how to do decals anyway. But 
there's not much point in filming doing exactly the same thing to all of them all of the time uh, now being such a small decal you don't really need to worry about using water with it you can get away with just using microset so what I'm going to do is just get a smallish brush microset just on the back of the decal itself and some on the front as well and that will actually do a good enough job of loosening it from the paper and let me move it and put it where I need it to go on there. Now I'm going to have to put my magnification on to see because obviously it's pretty small uh, and it is actually slightly shaped so uh, apologies if I go out of shot because I can't be looking at the screen and um, I say doing what I need to do down here so I'm just going to make sure yeah there you go that's moving nicely on there so I'm actually going to grab that get rid of the paper I don't need that anymore and then I'm trying to see where I can go there we go I can put that where it needs to be thereabouts on the piece while it's still sort of wet I can move maneuver it a little bit get it exactly where I need it to be and that will dry pretty much like that uh, I will use some microsol on it once it's set in place to basically get rid of the carrier film from around the edges uh, but that is decals really um, normally if a, on a bigger decal you'd cut it off and put it in water and then let it slide off that way but on these tiny ones you can get away without messing around so I'm gonna get the big one on there and the little and the big one on the other one and then we'll see about building it together that's the cockpit all decaled up and painted uh, so there's a little bit of assembly to do on that uh, basically we've got the the joystick to fit into the little hole in the front of there so that I'm just gonna insert and see yeah that's not gonna hold without any glue so we've got the extra thin now we're gonna do is get the end of that covered and then that goes in where it needs to go We'll hold it there for a few seconds to give the glue time to set and that is that so that's ready to go uh, the back of the seat goes in afterwards I have painted that again in the two different shades of grey uh, and we've got the sort of the engine intake bit and the front nose cone bit uh, which need to go in at the same time I've done the decals and the interior piece on there as well so basically that needs to go in like that and the back bit needs to go in like that in both sides with that in the middle all at the same time while you're putting it all together so the fun bit is doing it one bit at a time so what I'm going to do is again get a little bit of glue uh, put it just around the outside here and get that in place now I did consider painting these first before assembling them uh, but the outside bit of here has also got to be painted the same color as the the nose cone piece uh, so I thought I might as well do it well, look, you know once it's assembled it's gonna be just as easy uh, so the bottom bit there is where that needs to sit just in there like that so that lines up at the top there according to the instruction manual now I'm going to do this relatively fast so I can get the other side on before this glue dries dries so we can make sure everything lines up properly so getting that down on there and then I'm going to add some glue to all three other areas and get that together as well and then I can add some more glue down the seams on this looks like that's going quite well 
get everything lined up nicely just a touch of glue to go down there and this bit is going to be covered anyway so I'm not too worried about that bit and the underside again much the same again just getting it covered so that's that bit that's the difficult bit uh, then we've got to get the chair back in there so again a little bit of glue down the back there where that's going to run obviously get it the right way round and the right way up and that will slide down into place and make sure there's enough room for the, the canopy to go over the top of that obviously as well and then the other two pieces we have to worry about is the little uh, interior piece and the main um, wings let's get this the right way round and the right way up so it sits in there and then all of that goes up onto there so we just need a little bit of glue around some of the edges and at the back and the front and then that will pop into place just like that so it's only a little bit of that you can actually see through the inside there so that's that and then the final piece of this main assembly is the um, sort of the top half of the build the tail cone and the other bit which does locate in one pin and then lines up across the top there just to give it that shape uh, so I've got to do that all over again with the other one and then we'll get the canopy on and we'll see where we are so the last part of this stage is putting the canopy on um, now uh, I'm going to be doing the canopy closed uh, so I don't need number two but I do need one and three so I'm going to get those off the sprue as per normal now when you're dealing with clear parts you've got to be much more careful with um, cutting off of sprues and things like that because any um, straining or cutting on the plastic is going to be much more apparent because although the edges of it are going to be painted you're not going to be doing so much on this as you would on a normal piece of kit and obviously being transparent it's a lot clearer to see problems so I'm getting that off of there and then actually using a knife I'm going to remove most of the bits there They're a little bit bigger than I would normally leave them because as I say I want it to leave a bit on there just going to check to see if any of those are actually necessary little blobs to hold it in place no it looks like obviously the the little one goes at the front just sits in there like that so that does need to be all flush and the back one doesn't use the little blobs to hold it in at all so we can get rid of those completely shave them down most of the way and then we can sand them down even more than that uh, now this is going to be the first time that I'm using these bits that they've supplied in there uh, a little sheet if I can get the angle right you'll be able to see some of it a little sheet of masking stickers which I used for uh, some of the painting on the the body itself and for the canopy the masking of the canopy uh, so if we look at the instruction sheet again it shows what's being used for B1 and B3 um, B1 you use obviously duplicates of each uh, two little ones and one oval shaped one there by the looks of it yep and this one's got the two semicircular bits obviously it doesn't show, it doesn't cover the entire canopy just the edges so you can paint the edges it's not obviously designed for airbrushing because you wouldn't be able to airbrush quite that fine 
but um, that's what we'll be doing on that next so I'm gonna get this tidied up and actually put them on there because it's a lot easier to deal with these when they're on the canopy I'm uh, gonna be putting them on using a canopy glue not a normal uh, Tamiya extra thin or super glue or anything like that because otherwise it will mist up so I'll get them stuck on there and then we'll see about putting on some masking right that's glued in place now um, it's set the canopies are on uh, so let's see what we can do with the masking now the two that I need for the, um, the larger piece is going to be one of them there we go and the other one that looks just like it next to it now so I've not done these bits before but they look pretty much like they're just basically stickers uh, trouble is I'm going to try and do this so you can see it and so I can see it so hopefully that's about there uh, basically just going to get it lined up where it needs to be get it touched in place and then line it up around the edges looks like there's going to be some overlap at the top which is fine so that is that nice and easy no problem at all there let's grab some of this bit from the other side as well that one there and get that off there and get that stuck yeah i knew it was going to knock the camera sooner or later just in place there as well so that's not quite in the right place that one Trying to get a corner lined up and hopefully the other corner will line up as well there we go so yeah there's definitely an overlap there try and get that square might take a little bit of tweaking to get these lines just right but that seems to be work quite nicely it saves a lot of messing around with masking tape and trying to cut them to shape yourself so thank you very much for making those in there that's uh very well done uh edward isn't it? that's what makes this kit yeah i think yes yeah edward a little bit of attention to detail uh so that will be on there and then i need to obviously do the little ones on the front and then I'm going to do these in a, a grey. I'm going to do the surrounding part of the canopy. Uh, mainly because I'm going to be doing one in camo and one in silver. But you might still be able to see the insides of whatever from the outside. So grey will give me a good coverage. So even on the uh, metallic silvery one, it's still that colour. So I'll get them painted up. I'm going to brush paint them on because I don't want to get... All over the place and have to either worry about masking everything else and obviously i don't want to do this little circle there either so i'll get them done and then basically do it all over again for the second one and then when that's there i'll show you what we got and there we have it that's the gray brush painted on there um i've probably left the masking on because i'm going to be doing more to it and obviously i still don't want to get the canopy uh covered in paint and things um and because you know I'm a masochist I've done it again the same again on the second one uh, so they're both good to go uh, ready for the next stage um, now I have got the undercarriages and bits for both of them but haven't done them yet I figure it's going to be much easier to paint and especially do the C1 without all the extra little bits and the little um, pokey pointy bits and things like that on there uh, so that is where I'm actually going to be ending this stage of the video um as ever i hope you've enjoyed it i hope you you know picked up one of the kits they're, they're dirt cheap for me models uh pick one up have a try yourself i'm sure you can do better than me uh so i'm going to finish that there um when we come back on the the next half the second half of the video uh is going to be the the major painting um and obviously attaching the weapons and undercarriage and things like that to them uh so as ever i hope you've enjoyed watching and uh stick around soon for the next and final part. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.